The followers of Muhammad have been indoctrinated by their scholars about the alleged divine origins of the Quran, and the overwhelming majority do not know and have not been informed about the stories in the hadiths and some verses in the Quran that actually point to the contrary. Will you elaborate? Your observations are correct, and I shall recite the following more important and relevant examples. Sahih al-Bukhari hadith 4.814, narrated by Anas. There was a Christian who embraced Islam and read Surah al-Baqarah and al-Imran, and he used to write the revelations for the Prophet. Later on, he returned to Christianity again, and he used to say, Muhammad knows nothing but what I have written for him. Ladies and gentlemen, this story relates to the fact that one of Muhammad's scribes used to modify his revelations so that they rhymed better with the full knowledge of Muhammad. This made the scribe realize that they could not possibly have been divinely revealed if a mere mortal like him was allowed and able to alter them. So he left Muhammad and his Islam and reverted back to Christianity. The following is a shortened version of a hadith regarding Muhammad's first alleged violent encounter with the angel Gabriel. Sahih al-Bukhari hadith 1.3 narrated by Aisha. Thereupon he caught me for the third time and pressed me and then released me and said, اقرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الإنسان من علق Read in the name of your Lord who has created, has created man from a clot. Then Allah's apostle returned with the inspiration and with his heart beating severely. Then he went to Khadija bint Khuwailid and said, Cover me, cover me. They covered him till his fear was over, and after that he told her everything that had happened and said, I fear that something may happen to me. Khadija replied, Never by Allah, Allah will never disgrace you. Khadija then accompanied him to her cousin, Waraka bin Nawfal bin Sa'd bin Abdul Uzza, who during the pre-Islamic period became a Christian and used to write with Hebrew letters. He would write from the Gospel in Hebrew as much as Allah wished him to write. Another version of the same event goes like this. Sahih Bukhari Hadith 6.478 narrated by Aisha again. Khadija then took him to Waraka bin Nawfal, the son of Khadija's paternal uncle. Waraka had been converted to Christianity in the pre-Islamic period and used to write in Arabic and write of the Gospel in Arabic as much as Allah wished him to write. The listener should be made aware of the transition in the two hadiths, from writing in Hebrew to writing in Arabic. This was part and parcel of the methods used by the later followers of Muhammad to deliberately distance Waraka from the Jews as much as possible to make believe that the Qur'an was not influenced by anyone outside of Muhammad. When one studies, and I repeat the word studies, the Qur'an, one will have no choice but to conclude that the Qur'an is based almost entirely on plagiarized, plundered, pirated, and or perverted concepts, precepts, thoughts, and ideas from the traditions, fetishes, and scriptures of the pagan Arabs, Jews, Christians, and Zoroastrians. In the final analysis, the only new revelations that the Qur'an introduces are the enormous number of hate-mongering, war-mongering, terrorizing, and racist verses that fill its chapters.